Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. God bless you. Good afternoon. It's good to see you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to go a little deeper today. I hope you guys had a wonderful week. I've been really busy. I'm going to wait for a few more of you guys to come up. God bless you, Cassandra. God bless you, my beautiful sister Latoya. So good to see you up here on today. I'm going to go a little deeper today. Um, let me say this. Um, um, when you're dealing with these types of issues, um, a lot of people don't deal with these types of issues. God bless you, Sister Stephanie. So good to have you up here, woman of God. God bless you, um, Brother Keith. God bless you. Good to have you up here. Wave to you. Wave to you. Um, many people don't deal with these types of issues. Um, I don't know why they don't deal with them in the church. They should because a lot of people are suffering from this. Um, but these are issues that go deep to the foundation of our life. And, and, and many of us do not move forward or cannot move forward because we're not really dealing with the root of the situation that is going on in our life. And um, spirit husbands and spirit wives, they are very prevalent, but they are not the only thing that are torturing people, okay? Because you're dealing with the ink of a spirit. You're dealing with the suck of a spirit. Um, God bless you, Sister Stephanie. So good to have you up here, woman of God. You're dealing with the ink of a spirit. You're dealing with the suck of a spirit. This spirit is a um, an ancient spirit that sets on the chest cave cage of men and women. Okay, it's a sex spirit. It's a male and female spirit. Um, I think the ink of a spirit can mess with male and female. Okay, but this these spirits are ancient spirits that um, that come into the dream and they they literally set on the chest cage of um, the individual where sometimes it seems like you're being suffocated or you can't breathe. Um, you, you have to say Jesus in your mind, um, um, some of these spirits. But I want to see, I want to tell you the difference between the different spirits that you have to contend with. And I want to also deal with the ancestral part of it, um, where uh, many times our ancestors have um, raised, um, um, raised up altars to these to these particular entities and we don't realize that we have been tied to them by bloodline uh, or by ancestral connection um, but also I want to um, say that you have human spirit you have the incubus succubus spirit the human spirit is when somebody astral project out of their body and they come into other people's spaces and they mess with them in the dream um, that's a spirit husband that's a spirit wife um, the incubus succubus spirit is a ancient spirit that um, is many times um, used by witches and warlocks they they use these spirits witches and warlocks that not only do they use the incubus and the succubus spirit but they use the nephilon spirit um the nephilon spirit are water spirits that give you access into the spiritual plane okay so um the ones that i was um i'm dealing with um were the Nephilim spirits, um, the water spirits. And many people might be dealing with this spirit. This spirit is, um, you can see sometime when somebody enter into your space, um, I've, I've seen the, the shade of water. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I've seen the water kind of move, um, water spirits, okay? All right, so you're dealing with people that astral project out of their body. They're coming through the astral realm, um, dealing more so in the... Um, um, the soul realm, okay, and then you're dealing with the incubus succubus spirit, which is an ancient spirit. It's a sex demon that many times is used um, to help people exit the body. It helps people to exit the body. Now, the Nephilim spirit. Hmm. I, I'm, I generally don't have no problem with my phone, but this is going to be a little serious today. And so um, I'm exposing stuff. And, and let me say this. When you begin to expose things like this, all hell breaks loose in your life. Because number one, you might be encounter you, you might be encountering every day somebody that is doing this to you. Um, it could be somebody in your inner circle. It can be a pastor. It can be a bishop. It could be a, um, a, a, a close friend, a brother of a close friend, a sister of a close friend. It can be someone in your inner circle. But most of the time, it's someone that has betrayed you to that other realm. Okay, it's someone that is close-knitted to you that gain access 
into your dream world that gain access into your life yeah it's some most of the time somebody sold you out okay and so i, I want to deal with these um these particular entities on today because when i when i got off of here um last week i think it was last week i came up under major attack um um in every aspect so for you that feel that you are being blessed um by the ministry that is coming out of my uh, out of my spirit the kingdom ministry that god has deposited on the inside of me a a, a different type of ministry that is willing to um, make the um um take the chance and and make the sacrifice to come out here and talk about things that other people are unwilling to talk about because they don't want to be seen as too deep or whatever reason they don't want to talk about these issues but these are the deeper issues of life that have people bound bound financially bound in every aspect of their life they can't even get married because they may be connected to someone else and that's not just women that is also men they may be connected to someone else in another room and you're wondering why you're having problems in relationships and all these kinds of things it could be that you're connected you're connected somewhere else and you don't realize it this is why I put some prayers on my page um, and the prayers are very extensive they give you um, all the know-how on how to pray but I'm gonna say that you must be saved you must repent you cannot live any kind of life and expect to get free okay so in order for you to get free from these demonic forces we have to live right before the Lord now you might not be able to get it all right because you're still working your salvation out but you must have a covenant you must must have a communion with God that you really want to be with him and he will help you to work out your salvation your soul salvation with fear and trembling um, I want to talk about two movies before I go into um, the word today and I'm going to start with some of the scriptures that I left off with the last time um, I had to get off abruptly because I had to go get my granddaughter um, and then I'm gonna go back to um, my my website okay um, one movie is called Doctor Strange. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this movie. God bless you, um, um, Sister Rosalind. So, gl so glad to have you up here, woman of God. Um, one is called Doctor Strange. Um, this is a crazy movie, but they're dealing with sorcerers. They're dealing with um, astral projection. And I just thought that movie was just very um, inductive. And if you want to know what's going on in the astral room, this is what they're doing. They're fighting one another in the astral room. And not just um, witches and warlocks, but leaders. Um, these people are fighting in another room, and you can't even see what's going on. You understand what I'm saying? But that movie kind of gives you some insight. And another movie is called Inception. Inception. Inception says that they go into the dream. Um, these are uh, people that are spies and secret agents. They go into the dream of other human beings and they take things out. They rob them of information. They go and they spy. They look at um, they look at the, the corridors of the thoughts of man. Now, this is Inception. Now, that's deep, okay? Now, if these people have made a movie about this, uh, most likely these kinds of things are happening. God bless you, um, Sister Michelle. So good to have you up here, woman of God. And so... We're we're going to be dealing with um, um, the water spirit. We're going to be dealing with the incubus, succubus spirit. Um, and the Nephilim spirit is, is, is conducive to the um, water spirit. And we're going to deal with astral projection. And all of these can connect you to a spirit husband or a spirit wife. All right. And many times when you are connected to a spirit husband and a spirit wife, you might not even know it. And this is why many people are not married because they are connected in another realm and so I put prayers up there um, for you to be able to pray and to break soul ties and to break things off of your life that is restricting you and when you are connected to a water spirit this spirit creates rage this spirit creates um, poverty this spirit creates all um, how do I know because I've been in this for and I believe that sometimes God permits us to come through things so we will be able to help others to come out. Um, many people cannot help people come out because they don't understand what's happening. And so sometimes God lets us go through things so we will have the roadmap for other people to come out of their situation. It's unfortunate because it's, it's real um, uncomfortable and sometimes it becomes very nasty and dirty. You understand what I'm saying? But you got to help people get out of the places 
of life that they've been stuck in for 10, 15, 20 years because no one has the answer. And then those that do have the answer, they want you to pay for it. They want, you know, coming back to that, um, I, I wanted to say for you that are being blessed by the ministry of God, and I generally don't do this because this is just not what I do, but if you are being blessed by this ministry, I would ask you to sow a um, a, um, a seed, a love seed. Um, it, it can just be a first time seed um, because of the attack that came from from the last message that I put on that was a major attack and it wasn't just in my finances it was also in my family and so and because Satan gets angry you're helping people get free they don't want you telling people the truth they don't want people to know that they're bound in another realm in their soul they don't want people to know this because then people will be able to get free so if you're being blessed just go to icb www.com um and i'm going to put that address up after this so i'm not even going to go into that all right so i want you to first go with me i, I ended last time with ruth coming through the floor coming through the floor and i don't know if a lot of people understood what i was coming where i was coming from when i came through that book um that she came through the floor and her and 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 boaz said um she said cover me and with your skirt until the morning come he didn't even know who she was she had to tell him that she was ruth okay and so i wanted to i wanted to let you know that when people are coming in through other realms you're not quite sure of that's why <laughs> that's why we need to be spiritually redeemed. This is why we need to be spiritually restored. And this is why churches that are not connecting you to who you are and your creator who's on the inside of you, then they want you to remain blind for what purpose, for what reason, or they just don't have the know-how. But the job of the leader is to lead you to the God inside of you, to get you redeemed, to get you restored, to get you reconciled back to your heavenly father. Once we are awakened spiritually, we can see the ins and outs of those that are coming into our spirit, um, coming into our sphere. Um, um, yeah, yeah, our sphere. What did I say last time? The Bible said that 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 when um, when Isaac, or was it Isaac? Um, when, when Jacob went into Leah, the Bible said that he went into her. Um, when I talked about Adam and Eve, I said that Adam knew his wife according to knowledge. None of these things included, it didn't mention sex at all. It's deeper than sex because someone can take you in another realm. They can enslave you there. You can be having sex with them every night and not even know it because they come in through the broken areas of our lives. They come in through the broken foundation of our lives. Okay, so this is a serious topic. And when you speak on things like this, the devil, un he unleashes demonic attack because he don't want you opening up your mouth and there i'm not the only one that know about this stuff i'm just one in a few that are talking about it other than those that are in africa maybe in india and in asia these people they deal with the spiritual plane on a regular basis it is here in america that we are sealed off we are sealed off from the spiritual plane and we live a religious formality of christianity and we have no spiritual redemption and we don't understand what is happening in the spiritual realm and if we become redeemed if we become restored then we can be a support system for the body of Jesus Christ otherwise we become what a dependent on the body we become dependent on leadership we become dependent on a religious setting that cannot save or deliver us we need to be connected to God okay so human spirits they astro out okay human spirits astro out the um um the nephilim spirit is a water spirit a water spirit that is um a spirit that is proud it it once it is um entered it has all of the attributes of rage and violence um it's a sexual spirit that d deals in um, um polygamy um you can have whole churches that are operating up under a nephilim spirit if that leader has tapped into the dark world you can have whole churches operating in this spirit that's why you have um a pastor that's not married and everybody in the church think that that's their 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 husband um something's going on in that realm you understand what i'm saying and so, yeah, 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 yeah. Something's going on in that realm. So let, let's keep going. Ezekiel 27 talks about how these water spirits, um, they, they, they flow through finances. They flow through fashion. They flow through all um, um, means of life, okay, preventing 
progression, preventing us from moving forward, preventing us from being able to get past. Um, look, look, we live in a cycle that we cannot break. This can be done by water spirit, Nephilim spirits. The succubus spirit is a spirit. These are ugly critters. Um, Incubus succubus is sometimes utilized by the astro um, human to leave the body. It is sometimes utilized by the astro person to leave the body. Okay. And, and when it's utilized, it, it, it plunges on the chest. Sometimes it makes it where you can't breathe. You can't, you can't, um, you can't talk, you can't speak, and you have to say Jesus in your mind. Um, these are incubus sex demons and succubus. These are male and female spirits that can mess with either male or female, okay? But the husband spirit, this is the spirit that we're going to deal with. This is the one that we may have been betrothed to in another realm and, and do not know. And Moses told us, he told us, I had to fight to come up here today, you guys. Moses told us that it was not possible for a man and woman to be divorced in the beginning because you cannot divorce yourself. Well, if you're marrying people that are not your husband or not your wife, then it's easy to get a divorce because you're marrying based on physical nature. But I believe that God has specifically designed each of us for uh, a mate, just like he did Adam. You understand? Just like he did Adam. I mean, E for Adam. I believe this. Why do I believe this? I believe that we, the woman, is made in accordance to the man. And when the man sees the woman, he understands her as his wife. Why? Because she looks like him. She, she sounds like him. She talks. Everything about her um, mimics him, even though he don't really know her, even though he ain't never saw her before. Because God designs the wife based on the content of the husband, just like he did Eve for Adam. But it's not like that today. People are not looking to be married according to the will of God. They're being married according to the will of lust. They're marrying based on lust. They're marrying based on um, physical attraction and all of these other things. But they're not marrying based on a spiritual covenant that may have been preordained by God, may have been preordained by the Lord. Okay. All right. Sometimes God put marriages together for ministry sake. And when you come together with something that you have been designed to be with someone that you have been designed to be with, I mean, you cannot divorce yourself. You really cannot divorce yourself. Okay. What I'm saying. So, so when people are marrying today, they're not marrying because God has ordained the marriage. They are marrying because I, I'm doing, I'm going somewhere with this. Just give me a little time here. They're marrying because of lust they're marrying because they might you know um, get along with each other they they have a great ideal together they 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 they, they, you know, they click with each other, but the marriages don't last because it's not a God ordained marriage. It's not a God ordained. Marriage. You don't marry for sex. You don't marry for lust. Sorry about that. You guys, you don't marry for sex. You don't marry for lust. You don't marry for money. Okay. No, because you can marry a billionaire and be tortured in a mansion. You don't marry for money. You don't marry for any of the, you don't marry for beauty. You don't marry for any of these things. These things are surface. These things especially if you are a believer especially if you love the lord but before you get married you must be free you must be free from every attachment that has attached itself to you because otherwise you can connect to the wrong kind of mate you can correct i mean connect to the wrong kind of husband now Ruth came up through the foundation of boaz we're gonna we're gonna go somewhere today i want to i want to finish my scripture from the last time i was up here I want you to go with me first to 1 Corinthians, and we're going to start at 7, 8 through 9. 1 Corinthians, and we're going to start at 7, 8 through 9. Okay, so we dealt with Jacob and how when he went into Leah, he did not recognize her. And we understand that he did not recognize her because he went in some other way. Because they went in in the evening time. It didn't say they went in in the night time. They went in in the evening time. Um, and so, so, so we're going to deal with some of these scriptures and we're going to go a little deeper today. Okay. So we have, um, the incubus spirit. We have the succubus spirit. We have the astral projecting warlock or witch that, um, have not been disconnected from their lower nature and they're traveling outside of their bodies based on their lower nature. And they're messing with men and women in the dream, in the dream, they can take 
from you in the dream. They can take your virtue and bury it in the earth. And you can be living in poverty based on somebody else's abstraction of what rightfully belongs to you because you have never been sealed off. The doors have not been shut. Maybe from an ancestral bloodline. Maybe from a relationship that you have had in your past. Or maybe from masturbation or any other means that you have opened the doors to these demonic forces. We must repent. We must ask God to forgive us that 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 the seal of the Holy Spirit will be placed upon our lives and it can eradicate a lot of the activity that's taking place on today. Sometimes it might not be you. It can be your spouse. You can be married and still going through this stuff. And and if your spouse is looking at um, pornographic stuff, looking at all these things that open up doorways to these lust spirits, then this is another reason, another doorway for demonic forces to get in to mess with us um, in the dream. Okay. So go with me real quick to um, 1 Corinthians. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. I had a fighting weekend, but it's okay. Because you know you have to go through stuff like that when you're releasing truth. And you know you have to. And, and I want to deal um, on the next um, time I come up, I want to deal with the vampire spirit. Because that vampire spirit is a real demonic force. You understand? Uh, that vampire spirit. Um, and, and they do spells and incantations and all these things. I'm going to deal with that the next time I come up, okay? The vampire spirit. God bless you. God bless you, sis. Um, so are, are you there? Genesis, 1 Corinthians. I mean, I mean, 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. In the, we're going to start. I'm going to start at the eighth verse. The eighth verse. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it says, I say, therefore, to the unmarried and the widow, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. And that burn is not just going to hell, but there is a burning in the body as well. You know, some people equate that to going to hell. But it's also a burning in the body as well. Okay, which is lust, of course. Um, but you don't marry for lust. You, you're married for love. I know a lot of the older people um, in the biblical time, they, they took young girls and they married them to satisfy their nature or whatever, you know. But root thing was all about redeeming a bloodline, redeeming a bloodline. And when we are dealing with these kind of demonic forces, they cut off the bloodline. The bloodline is, 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 is not connected to God. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to deal with this kind of stuff. This is an atrocity when you are being raped in your sleep, when you are being um, um, disturbed in your sleep, when you have to pad yourself so nobody will touch you. These are um, rapes. These are atrocity. And sometimes they come through the bloodline. OK, but listen to what it says here. It says, and, and unto the Mary, I command yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Let not the wife depart from her husband, but if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Let me tell you why. Because if, it's the, if this is a spiritual union, the woman is a head. She is, she, she is a, a womb. The man comes into the womb of the woman. This womb is connected to this womb. Like his head is connected to this head until he is crowned by the headship of Jesus Christ. And then you have a holy matrimony and, and the wife and the husband come together and it's beautiful. But when, yeah, it's beautiful because it's something that has been sanctioned by God. And this is why we must be clean. We must walk upright. We must get connected to the Lord so the Lord will be able to look design us based on who we are supposed to be connected to and that way when you see when your husband see you woman of god he'll see himself because a man cannot love you as himself if he doesn't know himself. And if people get married, not understanding who they are, they're going to end up divorced anyway. You understand? God bless you, husband. I'm so glad to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. So even after she leaves the husband, even after the husband leaves her, they're still in the soul. It's, they're still existing in the soul of that man. That is weird. I know it's they're still existing in the soul. So she's not really free unless her husband die. 
because once she makes covenant with him, make, once she communes with him, now this is not all women because some husbands are dead spiritually and y'all just bammed each other physically, okay? And you just came together like that. And if he was not saved or if he was not spiritual, he could have opened up a doorway to sexual demonic forces like the Incubi, the Succubi, and all these other spirits. I'm just saying that these spirits have to have gateways to get in. They have to have doorways to get in. Okay, now I got, I got, I got to, um, to deal with this in a sense where, um, it's from my own personal experience. My husband had a, a dream some time back. I'm gonna tell this dream that he had saw me a long time ago, some uh, about a year or so ago. He had saw me, um, God bless you, baby, saw me sitting in the dream. He came in the dream, and 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 the church. It was a, it was a. It was a whole church, like a kingdom in another realm. And 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 the the leader had me serving him, but I look like a mummy. This is I'm I'm a deal, I'm gonna tell you why I'm I'm telling you this. I look like a mummy, he said. I look like I was there, but I wasn't there. Okay. And 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 I was serving him to the left. But all these people were there, like hundreds and hundreds of people. And to me, that is it. That is that is an incident to me. Like that's a soul tie. That is a spirit husband that that you can become unaware of, and and serving that person in another realm. And when you have been broken as a child, if you have been raped, if you have been molested, yeah, yeah, that's what happened to me. I was raped. I was molested, and didn't remember the rape. Didn't remember the trauma. Well, people come into that broken area. They come into that broken area. This is how they gain access to the soul. The, the part of you that has never been touched. The, the, I'm telling you, you don't remember. But they went and they found that broken area and they came into the soul and they brought your soul into captivity. And you became their mate in another realm. And you don't even know it. And they could be coming in and out of you every night without your knowledge. This is sad, y'all. Because... This stops your, your, your financial progression. It stops your life. It stops your destiny. It stops everything in this realm. When you are serving somebody else in another realm, when you are being robbed and raped of who you are, molested of who you are in another realm. Well, I believe um, that dream because I had a dream about that same leader 15, 18 years ago that they came through my foundation. And when I, they thought I was asleep, when I, when I saw them come through the floor with someone else, but I was woke and they came through my foundation. And all these years later, I got married. It took me 23 years to get married. It's something up with all of this. I'm just, I'm just letting you know, when you are not married, when you don't seem to have good relationships, there might be a reason for that. You may be connected to someone in another realm. See, and sometimes you might meet somebody that feel like they're your husband or, or they're your wife. They could have already clocked you in another realm. See, that's why I don't get why people don't just date normally and they got to go try to find somebody in another realm instead of just dealing with them on a, on, on a, on a, on a, take them out the coffee, you know, ask them out for a date. You know, why, why tie somebody up in another realm where they cannot get married down here? A lot of this is going on. I just want you to know that. And then when you do get married, the, the poor husband get beat to death or the poor wife get beat to death because you tied to somebody else in another realm and the marriage can't work. The marriage won't work because you're still married to someone else in another room. Like this lady, she could leave her husband, but she could never remarry because she was still married in another room. Now listen to what this says though. It say, but to the rest, it say her to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I not speak I not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she did say, but this is not God talking. He say this is me talking. And she decide to leave, let her leave. It, 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 it's all right if she don't dwell with him. Now, this is not God saying this. This is Paul saying this. But Jesus said at the beginning, it was not possible to be divorced from yourself because you become one flesh based on a spiritual covenant. So many people can be bound in a spiritual realm, in a spiritual covenant with somebody that have already arrested your soul. 
for the taking. And you don't even know. You don't even know. And when you have been bound like that, when you have been captured like that, you'll, they can open your door open to everything. I mean, to all kind of demonic influences, especially if you make that spirit wife or that spirit husband angry. They will open you up to all kind of renegade spirits. And you wake up with bruises all over. You wake up with all these kinds of things. On you. you start having all these body and health issues because they have made you an open gateway for every demonic influence when you do not subjugate yourself to the spirit husband or the spirit wife. So God is saying that even when a woman get married, when she leaves that husband, let her not marry. But it, Paul says it's all right for her to leave. She, she's not held in captivity. But the Bible says she will never be free until the man is dead. Well, if you marry a dead man, you are already free. I ain't trying to be funny or nothing. But I mean, marriage is a spiritual covenant. Marriage is spiritual. It's not body to body. It's spirit to spirit. How else can it be brought before a spiritual God? Marriage is spiritual. And sometimes you can be betrothed to a beast. Because our ancestors, I came from the Creek Nation, um, the Cherokee Nation on my father's side, the Creek Nation on my mother's side. And of course, you know, they call um, the Creek Nation, Creek Nation, because they were um, um, uh, established beside a river. And so they dealt a lot in rain dances and all these kinds of things. And then my grandmother, my great grandmother was connected to the Masonic and the Eastern Star, opening up a host of, of demonic forces on the family, on the bloodline. And for generations, nobody in my family has gotten saved. This is demonic. Very few people in my family have gotten married. Okay. I just want to say to you, if you're suffering from a spirit wife or a spirit husband, you got to check out the foundation. You got to make sure that you didn't open up a door or that your ancestors have not opened up a door. But these demonic forces, they are not going to go anywhere until you deal with the inner issues of your own life. That's one of the first things that we have to deal with. So Satan can't play cards with what we um, refuse to accept about ourselves, what we refuse to accept that's going on inside of us. We, when we play games with ourselves, Satan comes in and he plays the game with us. And so we have to deal with the internal issues of our life so we can close every door to the enemy. Let's go to another scripture. Revelation say, woe into the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. I just wanted to give that scripture because they are inhabitants of the sea, just like they're inhabitants of the earth. Russia, a Russian scientist, um, they captured a mermaid spirit. Um, this spirit is a representation of Dagon in the Bible. Okay. But it was a, a, a half man, half fish spirit. And, and the Russian scientists wouldn't let this spirit go. Go look it up. It was in the 1990s. Um, and they captured this spirit in the Caribbean. Go look it up. Okay. And they wouldn't let the spirit go except the spirit um, tell them where they lived. Um, w w was it more of them? So on and so on. I just want you to know that there are spirits. Spiritual, yes, you have to crucify the flesh, um, um, Brother Timothy. You got to um, crucify the flesh in order to shut those doors. And I will go there. Um, but 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 um, but but the but the Russian scientists wrote about the mermaid spirit and and said that they never released the mermaid spirit because they wanted to find out where the mermaid spirit habitation was. And the reason why I brought that up is that because you're going to be dealing with these kinds of spirits when you're dealing with water spirits, when you're dealing with astral projecting people, when you're dealing with the Nephilim spirit, when you're dealing with the Incubus and Succubus spirits. Some of these spirits are attached to things that have been here for ancient times, since ancient times. And they have been what what our picture or something that is connected to us, our bloodline has been placed upon an altar and the ancestral demons are giving gateways and doorways in to our life. And as Brother Nathan said, you must kill the outer man in order for you to be protected. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something that's hard to do because many people want to um, suffice their flesh. And so therefore, if they marry and they and they connect with people based on their senses. So, but, but, but if you love God, 
You got to understand that God designed you to be married. I think he designed us to be married. Um, I never wanted, I never cared if I was married. I never um, wanted to be married, um, so to speak. When I was growing up, I was with someone most of my life. And so um, when I got single, I stayed single because it was the first time that I had ever been single in my entire life. And I enjoyed my singleness. I enjoyed my wholeness. But I did not realize that someone had connected to me in another realm. And therefore, I was cut off. I was cut off from myself. I didn't even know. So we have to check ourselves. I came up with a, a very um, diabolical attack. I'm still kind of struggling with it, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. When you have an astral um, invasion by a human spirit, they come to get the knowledge of what and who you, who you are, what you possess for their own benefit, for their own pleasure for their own growth. Scripture states um, in Matthew that um, the devil waited for men to go to sleep, for him to come and sow seed in the unconscious state of man. And man did not even understand that seeds were being sowed inside of his soul. And this is what's happening to many people, even to me, it happened to me. I don't, I don't go through that too much anymore because I pray. And you guys use those prayers that I put on my thing. You have to get up and pray. And when you have dreams that, 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 that something is taken away, even if something is given, it can be a reversal. You need to go and you need to renounce those dreams. You need to uproot everything planted in the soul in the night hour. You need to, you need to cast down every imagination that goes against the mind. If you see yourself homeless, if you see yourself without you, if you see yourself with beef, somebody cooking beef because they're trying to stir up something on you uh, all of these things you must wake up immediately and castle these things out of the soul uproot them out of the soul uproot them out of the body uproot them out of the spirit that they will become non-effective that they will have no effect you got to cancel them and no matter how spiritual you become no matter how safe you are they still i don't know how to get in they got to have a gate they got to have a door and this is where I'm going to go right now. I'm going to the door of the church. If a church is established and it is not built upon the word of God, but it uses the word of God to draw people to itself, but it has a whole nother order built upon it that ain't got nothing to do with the kingdom. It has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the kingdom. This church can well be, um, can very well be a cult. And I, I gotta go here because so many people are locked in churches that are a cult. And because they cannot get into the kingdom of God, because they have no access into the inner corridors of the kingdom, because they have sold out to their own desire, to their own lust, many of these preachers, many of these leaders, they go into astral projection. They go into black magic work. They go in, and, and when they do these things, they are selling out God. Okay? Black magic gives them um, access into the world of the um, divination, into the world of fortune telling. It gives them access into um, um, the future where they are able to, to work in the, in the realm of the prophetic. OK, and so many of these preachers that are raising up churches that God never told them to raise up. He never told them to raise it up, up, up a church, because if you don't have access into the kingdom, why are you raising up a church? If you can't lead people to God so they can become who God designed them to be, why are you raising up a church? So if people are raising up churches and they are not developing people, they are not bringing people to wholeness, they are not bringing people to the full age where they know who they are, they know what they're designed to do, they know what they're supposed to be, then why are they raising up a church? It is a business. It becomes a business. And the people then become connected to the leader. The people then become connected to the vision of the leader. And they lose the vision of God for themselves. Now, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm walking here. I'm, I'm walking somewhere. In this place, you are opening up the door to every diabolical influence there is. So you can be saved. You can be sanctified. And filled with the Holy Spirit. 
But because you're in covenant with a church that's not in covenant with God, you got a gate open to every demonic force there is. Okay. I said you can be saved. You can be sanctified. You can love God with all your heart. But because you are in covenant with a church that's not in covenant with God, you are open to every demonic gateway there is. Because the way of the Lord Jesus Christ is the kingdom of righteousness. He said that I come to lead you to a kingdom, Luke 17 and 20. The kingdom do not come with observation. You can't say, lo, here it is, or lo, there it is. But the kingdom of God is on the inside of each and every one of us. So if the church is not leading you inside to the kingdom, if it's not leading you to the Lord, so you will be able to find out what you have been designed to do, what you have been purposed to do, then you are fulfilling an agenda for a cult. It, it, it's it's, it's going to become a cult. Because it's not kingdom oriented. It has no kingdom instruction. It's going to become a cult. And in order for that church to be sustained, many times they have to tap into underworld activities. And so you now developing a prayer life um, that is based on a religious setup that has nothing to do with the kingdom. Now, 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 now this is going to go deeper because... When you begin to pray, you're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven because you're not even connected to the kingdom of heaven. You're going to enter into some underworld activity. And your commitment is not really to what God has called you to do because you don't know who you are yet. Because they're not pre presenting you to the kingdom. Your commitment is to whatever that leader or that organization has called you to do. And so you are upbuilding something. That is opposite of the message of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Now in this place, you are open. You are open for sex demons. I remember a, a guy, a, a gentleman telling me many years ago. Um, he said that he, he was corrupt at a tender root. He was a pastor. He said he was corrupt at a tender root. And when he began to get trained, he was with well-known singers and all of these things. He said when he would, when he was sitting with the elders, when he was sitting with the pastors in the pulpit, they used to look from the pulpit and say which one, which woman or, or man they were going to sleep with. They were already teaching him how to fall. They were already teaching him how to contaminate himself. See. They were, they were already begging on who they were going to sleep with. When he told me that, that, that blew my mind. And he said, I was young in the Lord. I, I, was, I had just made it as an elder. And, and, and I got exposed to all that they were doing. Because these people were not connected to the kingdom. They, was built, they were building an organized um, system. Whether it be church or God. Church of God in Christ, whether it be apostolic, all of these things are all right if they're if they're teaching kingdom. So I'm not I'm not teaching against these organizations. I'm saying that they should be teaching kingdom. And if they're not teaching kingdom, then you're going to be disconnected from God. You're going to be connected to a leader. And that's demonic. I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just saying it's demonic. Why is it demonic? Because if his eyes is not connected to the mind of God. If his eyes is not connected to the mind of the Lord, then everything that comes in and out of his house become a predatorial spirit. And so sometimes you can be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, go home, somebody follow you home. Next thing you know, you got conflict in the house. You got conflict in the marriage. You got conflict in this. You got conflict in your resources. And you're sowing, you're paying your tithes on time. All of these things are taking place. I don't even know how I got over here. I was in a church baby for almost um, um, 18 years like that. And, 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 and the organization is built on men that have died and went on. And Jesus said, you're full of dead men's bones. You are full of things that are dead. You are full of things that are not alive. They're using the frame of another man's ideology to build their own thing. To build their own organization, to build their own agenda. But the people that are coming looking to find out what God is saying about them, what God has said. Look, look, spiritual vision, a spiritual teacher 
They open up the vision of the man and the woman. They open you up to the mind of God. That's real kingdom teaching that when you leave that house, your mind has been brought into the light of God and you've been opened up to the mind of God. But if they are not crowned by Christ, they are crowned by all of these different organizations and orders. When well, you're going to have so many demons flowing in and out of that house, you're going to have the Incubus. You're going to have the Succubus. You're going to have the Nephilim. You're going to have, you're going to have the Astro uh, projecting Bishop. You're going to have the Astro projecting Prophet. You're going to have all of this taking place because the church is not connected to the kingdom of God and they're not connecting others to the kingdom, but they are connecting people to their agenda and now you're connected to these people there ain't no man got no business ruling over another man no 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 the bible say jesus said look do not as the creeks you you are not to rule over your brother or uh, 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 be above your brother as the as the greeks do but you esteem your brother higher than yourself See, you're not supposed to rule over another man. And if this is the, the ego in full, full bloom, ruling over another man, guess what that's going to call? He's going to start reflecting himself. He's going to want himself. This is where homosexuality is becoming increased in the house of God because the ego is increased. And now man desire what he sees, which is himself. You are, this is demonic stuff taking place. And so are we surprised that we have spirit husbands and spirit wives running in and out of Godly people's households, upright people, people that truly love the Lord and wondering why this stuff is happening. Because they have tied themselves to religious orders that are not tied to kingdom teachings. The kingdom of God, it suffer violence. So anytime somebody come up here, you can see I'm getting a little free here because the devil was angry with me. He was angry when I exposed. But sometime in order for you to be free, you got to expose the enemy. You got to expose the enemy. The enemy don't want you to expose him. And when you expose the enemy, other people can get free. Other people can get free. Come on, let's go to another scripture. The Lord, when the Lord started dealing with me about deliverance, he said, Gay, you cannot help people get free unless you come that way. People want to be free. Um, I had um had a young man tell me a long time ago that when you know people come in and out of your space, you know, you can see those water spirits, they move like that. Uh, or the vampire spirit that come in and they they suck on this part of your head. Or, 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 they, or they're just sucking your energy, you know, and sometimes you can see that pulsation, they're sucking, they're looking for the anointing, they're looking, and that scripture come to mind where God said that the enemy came, um, uh, you remember that scripture that come to mind where they say God sent the prophet, and, and, the, and the husband man, they beat him, and they stripped him, and they threw him out, and then he sent another prophet, and they did the same to him, but when he sent his son, they looked at him and said, oh, he is an heir, let us, what? take him that we might take his inheritance uh, so so if you have anointing if you have the the will of god operating on the inside of you and you you end up in one of these you know <laughs> um demonic churches or these demonic cults you know they're gonna take you that they can take the anointing take the uh, come on now because god told me many of these people don't get into the heavenly gates because they don't want to surrender their own mindset when you go into the mind of God, you are not going in there to tell him anything. You're going to find out what he has already done. See, when you go into prayer, we ain't telling him nothing that he don't know and that he has not already accomplished. But we're going to find out what he has already done. And so people that are not willing to give up their own mindset, that are not willing to give up their own way, not willing to give up what they think or what they desire, they can't get into the kingdom of God. So they create a lie based on the truth and on this the world of darkness is released into the church the demonic is really and you and you wondering why you fighting demons and devils what were well, you fighting because you're not in the location that you belong where we have already won the battle where we have already won the victory oh hallelujah god bless you dr um high tower so good to have you up here man of god where you have already won the battle i remember god telling me gay why are you fighting something that your that that your brother jesus christ the one that has been made lord over this thing 
have already won. Found out because I'm tied to stuff that ain't tied to him. How you know they're not tied to him? Because this, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. So you shouldn't even call yourself an apostle unless you are casting out devils, unless you are healing the sick, unless you are raising the dead. I mean, come on. This is, these are the operation that follow the apostolic. You understand? But we have accepted things as they are because we don't care about being free. But I want to be free. I don't know about you, but I, I need to be free. But the Bible say these are the things that shall follow them that believe. But Jesus gave them a kingdom. Yes, spiritual infiltration in the church. And many of these people are not spiritual. They're astro, they're astro people. They're, they, they, they're, they're not connected to heaven. They're connected to the cosmos. They're nothing more than a psychic. They're operating in the same rim with the Hindus. They're operating in the same rim with the Indians. They're operating in the same rim with the Asians. They're operating in the same rim with the Muslims. They're operating in these rim Africans. You know what I'm saying? That's the cosmic rim that has been sealed off to three dimensions of space, which is a lot of space, and then closed off in the fourth dimension called time. But he's not going to let you into the heavenly rim because the heavenly rim is not outside you. Is inside you. That's why he said it's neither what it comes not with observation. You can't say low here it is or low there it is. But the kingdom of God is only inside of each and every one of us. So the doorway into him is inside, not outside. But those that are astral projecting, those that are going into the 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 underworld in the in the soul, um, the cosmic realm where the astral plane lies, they are. Um, adopting familiar spirits. They are dealing with the spirit of divination. They are dealing with the Incas, but succubus spirit so they can act. Look, um, 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 astro, um, astro out of the body. Yeah, they have to have a demon to get out of their body. And then they use the Nephilim spirit to operate in the power of witchcraft. See, they're using these things because they don't have no God. Because if they did, they would be teaching what God taught. They would be teaching what he taught. I'm not saying as a script. We've gotten accustomed to seeing people on a stage running a script. But when are we going to put a demand on the scriptures coming into a place of manifestation? When are we going to put a demand on the scripture becoming manifested? Therefore, when, when the scriptures become a manifestation in the lives of those that speak it, I mean really a real manifestation, then the counterfeit got to go. And a lot of things that are open will shut down. But no, because people want to be seen, want to be known because they truly don't know who they are. Because when you know who you are, you don't need to be seen. You don't need to be known because you are known of him. Because you are known of him and you are seen of him. And he is the greatest audience that any of us could ever ask for. But when you are not known of God, you don't know yourself. And therefore, if you seek for others to know you because you are empty of you. And this is a sad place to live in because many people have stepped out prematurely. And now they're dealing with these husband spirits. They're dealing with these incubus spirits. They're dealing with these Nephilim spirits because they don't have the power of God. They're not operating out of the kingdom of God. So how do, how do all of this stuff take place? It took place. Because many churches that are now being established, they've been established for a long time. Satan did this. Because he want, he, he, he know that if you come looking for God, he got to have a way to get you into hell. And that's why Jesus said that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Ain't no gates on the world. The world is running rampant. The Bible say they are without restraint. They are without restraint. When when the Lord told Jeremiah that he was sending him to the, the princes and the kings of, um, of Jerusalem or, or wherever he had to go in Jeremiah, the first chapter, he said, I'm sending you to the gates of Jerusalem. They have built their thrones at the entering in, entering in of the gates. And so you're going into these gates and inside the gates ain't nothing but hell. And that's why you got all this hell going on in the churches, because these are the gates of hell. 
because they are not connected to the kingdom of righteousness. If they were connected to the kingdom of righteousness, then the heavens would open up and put its approval on that organization or that religious body. Everybody starts out in religion. But at some point in time, you've got to end up in the kingdom. But you have not many people that have made the proper sacrifices, like my brother said, the, the, the denial of the flesh in order to gain access to the inward parts. And so because of that, they go out here, they start stuff, and they become intimidated by their people. They become intimidated because they are not supposed to be in the position that they are in. And some of them have grown to be great organizations, have grown to be and, 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 and full of demons, full of hell. Because it's not the message of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. So Nephilim spirit uh, contacted through witchcraft to produce supernatural power. So some people that are operating in the supernatural power, they could be connected to a Nephilim spirit. These spirits create storms. They create lightning. I mean, you got um, and some of these, some of these giants, some of these people are giants out here, you know. But then you do have the good ones that are known in the gates. They're known in the gates. Hallelujah. And then God let me deal with the night spells, those that come and they do incantations over your soul while you're sleeping, and you're wondering why you can't get free. And it could be the, <laughs> it could be the preacher. Okay. It could be somebody you're sitting next to in the church house. I used to be so gullible, you guys. So gullible. That I just believed everybody. I, I just thought people were right because they had a fear of God. Even if they weren't right uh, making it all the way. You know, they were still working out their own salvation. I still thought that they had a certain fear of the Lord. A certain fear and reverence for him. Because I don't know about you, but when I got saved, I fell in love with him. When I got saved, I wanted to do everything I could to please him. And I didn't want to mess up. And, I, and I, so, so when people do evil in the house of God, when preachers mess with women all up in the church house and they never get married. Or men, because you have homosexuality. Or women, women that's coming out of their cap. Their womb is open because they have burst through the flesh. They burst through the flesh and they opened up the womb of the cat. And now their head is open. And the Bible tell you, and in um, 2 Corinthians, I do believe. Let's go there real quick. I'm going to take you there real quick. The 11th chapter. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you guys for joining me on today. I guess you see I kind of bust on through. I, I got on through there. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Um, it said the 10th um, chapter. Um, the 10th chapter, thank God for the anointing. Um, um, it's in the 10th chapter and it said, um, Paul said, mm, I'm making sure this is the right one because, um, we want to deal with those that are coming in illegally, coming in illegally. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm still here. You guys, hallelujah. This wasn't a scripture that I had um, written down. Okay, let's go to, it's the 11th chapter, but it's 1 Corinthians, okay? Be ye followers um, of me, even as I also am of Christ, the veiling of the woman. Now, I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinance as, a deliver, as I deliver them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is who? Christ. And many of these people don't have Christ. How do you know? Because Christ is not egotistical. Christ is not a person that is haughty, that is prideful. Christ is a love that cannot be expressed from our world. Okay? So um, I'm not even going to go into all that. Um, but it, Christ is the head of every man. And, and the head of every man is the anointing of God. It is the seal of God's anointing. And the head of every woman is the man. The head of every woman is the man. This is the sign, the telltale sign, woman of God, that you are supposed to be married. Okay? Um, um, even if you ain't there yet, 
marry God. He said that he will be our husbands until he sealed us with the one that we are supposed to be with. Okay. Because we were designed for someone. We were designed to be married. You understand? Just as the man should not be alone. The Bible says not good for a man to be alone. And if a man stays alone for a long time, what is he doing? He's probably in these other realms that I'm talking about. He's probably somebody's spiritual husband. Okay. If a woman stay alone for a long time, I'm still alone for a long time and she want to be alone, she may have contaminated herself and other people see her in that room and they don't want her because she has become a spiritual harlot. You know, I'm running around in a room without a cover. That is the Bible say, let her be shaven. Okay. That's a little deep, but anyway, but I would be, be you have no glory there. You have no glory when you, when you running around like that in those rims. So if the man is not covered by Christ, when he is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, but he is no anointing. As I walk out of those kind of churches, I, I mean, I don't really go to everybody's church, but if I go to a church and there is no anointing, you just preaching and, and doing a whole lot of squalling or whatever, I'm gone because I don't have time for that. I'm not there for a, a theater or a drama. The, the, the stage of God should be used to open up the mind of God's people that they might see further into the truth. It should not be used as a, as a place to run a skit or a script, but it is a place that should open up the mind of people that they will be able to go further into the truth. And so when you don't have any anointing, when you have no insight into the mind of God, you can't even reveal the word of God. You're just preaching, just, just surface word. You know, you ain't supposed to have a church. There's no way in the world because you don't have no food. The Bible say, let the, 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 he said, he that you sit at meat when you don't have no food because you can't go get no meat. See, the Bible say, let the greatest among you be your servant. Why is he your servant? Because he has meat. He has meat. He can serve you. He can serve you food. Okay. He can, he can give you something to eat. But when people don't have anything to eat, they stir up all kind of stuff trying to build something for God that God never told them to build. And in the meantime, they're opening up gateways and doorways to every demonic force in the world onto their people. And the people are now being raped. They're being molested. They're being demonically attacked because they got some leader that is not connected to the kingdom of righteousness. This is terrible. Now, this shouldn't be happening in the church. I can see it happening in the world. But in the world, I didn't feel none of that stuff. Why? Because I was sealed off in my flesh. I wasn't spiritual. I was carnal. So I had no spiritual insight. I had no, no, I didn't fast. I didn't know nothing about that. My flesh was sealed off. So all I felt was this world. But when I became spiritual, when I began to put on the spiritual house, when I began to fast, when my mind began to open, when my soul began to open, look, where the preacher is supposed to be able to take you deeper, not leave you open to the demonic. Because the more you open up spiritually, the more you're going to sense these things that are around you. The more you are open to the spiritual plane, the more your senses is turned inward and the spirit man is now delegating through the senses because he don't have nothing else to delegate through. Then he's going to become aware of every demonic influence around him. And when you are not connected to the kingdom of righteousness, you're opening up the people to everything and the head is not sealed. And the reason is because the head is not sealed, because the head has not been crowned by Christ. You got to be crowned by Christ. I'm trying to get to one particular scripture here, though. So every man is is is, is the head of the woman and, and the woman is um, is of the um, wait a minute, Christ. Christ is the head of the man. And if the man is operating outside of Christ, he dishonor Christ. He's dishonoring his headship, which is Christ. OK, and the head of the woman is the man. And if the woman is operating outside of her husband, she is dishonoring her husband. She's dishonoring him. He has to seal her in what she does. Even with Deborah, she was the judge of Israel. They mentioned her husband one time. One time they mentioned her husband. But she judged all Israel. She had a cover. OK, and every man praying should not pray or prophesy 
with his head uncovered. And how do many how many people we see out here prophesying and and praying and they don't have the covering of Christ on their head. They are operating through demonic forces like the Nephilim spirit. And you wonder when you go to these prophecy um church you go into the church you you want to hear a word from the Lord and they prophesy then they lay hands on you and you don't even know that they didn't connect it to the underworld. They got Nephilim spirits on them. They got all kind of water spirits operating in them. And you wondering why you feel all this stuff touching you? Oh, because not unless you went and they saw you didn't. Uh, this is how we we, we kind of got, you know, attacked. When people see that you are clean and that you are holy and they have no access, they come after that like they did Jesus because you are in air. You are in air. And so they come after what's pure. They come after what's righteous because they need that. And they come into your space to get it because they need it. And many of them are in leadership. A lot of these spirits are not renegade spirits. They're not low grade spirits. They are, they are, they are, they are up there. You, the Jezebel spirit is a leadership spirit. It's a leadership spirit. <laughs> okay. I'm almost done, you guys. We're dealing with a lot of stuff because of the condition of the church. It's the condition of the church. Because the church don't want to come out of tradition. They don't want to come out of the dogma and the doctrines of men. They want to use the Bible to build a lie. When it's only the word is going to make people free. And only the word can cover us. Only the word can seal us off from all of these demonic forces. Even when people are connected to filthy and ungodly bloodlines, bloodlines that have been sold out by ancestors, when they get the word of God, which the Bible say washes us whiter than snow, it, it literally uproots these evil altars. But if you're going to a church that is not connected to God, it's connected to organizations, it's connected to uh, the, the, the underworld activities, connected to a whole lot of things. Come, come on, they're not preaching kingdom. They don't even have a clue what kingdom is. Then what are they connected to? And when you go to those altars, those are also altars. Those altars are erupting demonic forces because they can't reach heaven because they're not built on the kingdom. So they can only tap into underworld stuff. That's scary, you guys. It's scary. I don't, I don't, you say many, yes, many have the Holy Spirit, um, Brother Timothy, um, but are spiritually dead because of religious leader. True. They're not dead, but they're spiritually inoperative. They're not operating. And, but if they really have the Holy Spirit, it's going to be very hard for them to remain there. It's going to be hard because the Holy Spirit will drive you out. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will not only lead you, but he will teach you in all things. And you will need no man to teach you anything because the Holy Ghost will teach you all things if you have the authentic Holy Spirit. Yes, sis. Yes, Latoya. Many people, God bless you, Minister Graham. So good to have you up here, man of God. Many people, sis, are, are, are um, connected to the leader and they're not connected to God. I had a brother tell me one time, um, um, when you, when you, when you, when you leave and, and, and stay gone for a minute, um, do, that's like cutting off your lifeline. My lifeline is not another man. My lifeline is God. And this is where, um, the atrocity is that people are being connected to men and they're not being connected to God. And the moment you do not do what that man or woman wants you to do, they can send you un to an unstable place. Because you have put your trust in them and you don't have your trust in God. They're not God. They're there to lead you to the truth. A pastor is there to lead us to the truth. To open up the mind of God. So we will be able to see God in the light of that man's mind or that woman's mind. And the woman must be sealed off by her husband. Because her husband protects her. From all of the renegade spirits, from all of the, he protects her. He's supposed to be able to cover her. And this is where I'm going to go. Sometimes we get, that's when I say, sometimes you can get connected based on, you know, conditions or how you look or, or somebody just like you and, you know, you, you just get married or whatever. I don't know. I believe that we were designed to be with a specific person. And I believe that the person will know that that's your, 
they look at you, they know you you look just like them. And that's why he can love you as he loves himself. Because you were designed specifically for that individual. I know a lot of people don't believe that, but why would God make you just to make you? He made you with purpose. He made you with meaning. He had a reason for why he made you. And when Jacob, um, when Jacob went to be, um, when, when Jacob saw Rachel, immediately he wanted her. But he was given Leah. But he wanted Rachel. Immediately he wanted her. Okay? So, I mean, we got to understand that uh, um, spirit husbands, spirit wives, this thing can be done by um, pastoral ship. You can be connected to a leader and have a soul tie with a leader. And, 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 and if the leader is not married, oh my God be traveling through everybody okay that's now, this is some deep stuff this is scary if the leader is not married okay and and um for a woman to be out there without her head covered um that's why you see a lot of these women they become hard in their demeanor in the way that they deliver the word and all this kind of stuff because they are out of their element and they don't have protection and i always told the lord that i don't want to go out like that because if because when you when your head is open and you go out there and you prophesy and you preach without um, the seal of God and they say well God is your husband yeah he is your husband but there is a natural ordinance this is the natural ordinance of things there's a spiritual ordinance yeah he is my husband spiritually but there is a natural ordinance that we are supposed to abide in see and not trying to re, um it's it's for safety it's safety what do I mean by that. Yes, he do, sis. I mean, yes, he do, um, 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 Pastor Graham, he does. I'm going to go to this last scripture. I'm going to show you why he did this like this. Every man praying or prophesying, having his wife, having his head covered, dishonor of his head. So when he prophesied, when he prayed, and he does not have God on his head, he is dishonoring Christ. He's dishonoring Christ because he is not covered by Christ. He has no right to prophesy. He has no right to pray without him. And so men and women that are, are, are walking around with their head uncovered and they're doing all these things, they are dishonoring the Lord. But look at what it says about the woman. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head or her husband, her husband. And yes, Christ, the Bible say that her hair is her covering. Yes, that's when God glorifies her with his presence and he genuinely becomes her husband. But until then, she's going out with her head open. Yeah, God will glorify you because he sealed me off. He will glorify you and, and your hair is your glory. That is the glory of God. The hair represents the glory of God. Okay. His presence. He will seal you off until he seals you with a mate. But look at what he says that if you do, look, for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shaven. Let her be shaven because she has no glory and she brings no glory to her headship. She has no glory and she brings no glory to her headship. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed, I'm, I'm trying to get to this one scripture, you guys. For a man indeed, and I'm going to get off of here. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Nevertheless, was the man created for the woman, um, um, was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. I, I want to show you something. For this cause ought the woman to have power. Did you hear that? That's the part I want. For this cause the woman should have power on her head. Why? Why did it say? Because of the angels. Because of the angels. Because of the angels. Because of those that are fallen. So what happened in Genesis that created those Nephilim spirits will not continue to happen. Why would it say that? Because of the angels. People can come in to you. When you are open and you are spiritual and you have no cover. Angels can. So we must be covered. Or we're going to deal with these renegade spirits as women. We're going to deal with these renegade spirits. The man, if you're not covered by Christ. You're going to deal with renegade spirits. Because it's not just women getting raped. Men are getting raped too. Men are getting raped. What men that were 100% men are now becoming homosexuals? Why is that? Because they're being turned out in another realm. 
Come on now, we got to get connected to God. And that's why the church is in trouble because they are raising up these churches that are not kingdom oriented. They are not connected to the mind of the Lord. They're connected to the mind of a man. And because of that, people are falling away. People are backsliding. People are living all kind of hellish lives because they are living and being raised in a church called hell, the gates of hell that, are, that, that shouldn't be able to prevail against the word of God that's on the inside of us. I don't know why people don't know that's what that scripture means. Because if you go to all these churches, you see all the hell in the church. Yes. Yes. But if your husband is jealous of your gift, is what um, Latoya said. If your husband is jealous of your gift and hinders you from being used by God, then should that woman be set down? Um, it just, that's just an indication that you married someone that wasn't your husband because, um, a husband should never be jealous of, of, of what's operating on the inside of his wife because him and his wife are one. So if you are dealing in, in, in that type of, um, pro if that's a problem, you marry somebody that's probably not your husband. But I mean, I mean, God can develop them. I guess God can make them and bring them to where you are, but you're going to deal with that because He's not jealous of you. He's jealous of the spirit of God that's operating in you. And so when a man is intimidated by God because he has not met God yet or he is not where he should be in God, then I don't, that's unequally yoked. And I understand that too, Latoya. Um, I understand that. I never had the jealousy part, but I do know what it is to be unequally yoked together. And that can cause a whole lot of conflict. So yeah, um, when a man, um, um, I don't think that the woman should be um set down so to speak but um that's something that you and your husband will have to work out with your pastor you know with your pastor you and your husband should work that out with your pastor because if he doesn't i mean you do i mean they're not going to listen to you so i think that that should be discussed with the pastor you know um but it sounds like there's you know maybe there's something going wrong with the union you understand what i'm saying sis yeah hallelujah so, you know, because a lot of times women do marry people that are not connected to the anointing that's on their life. And that can be an intimidating thing um, to that man if he is not where his wife is. Or um, women are not generally um, intimidated, you know, by men that are spiritual um, because that's more of a covering for them. That's more of a, a security and a protection for them. But um, men that are, you, you uh, many women married men and not speaking about you um latoya um if you guys have any more questions we can just do that because i don't have my granddaughter today as you can see um but many men um um many women that are in ministry unfortunately they marry men um that are not their equal because they don't want to deal with those intimidating factors but you shouldn't do that because that creates an ahab and you know a jezebel ahab thing and you don't want that you know you want your husband to rule over you 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 want him to because he protects you to rule is to to have the extension above you so he can cover you and that's a good thing you know submission is not a bad thing submission is a good thing i personally think submission is a good thing because it's a it's a place of security it's a place of um yeah you know you're comfortable because you know they handling you know yeah so I, I don't know how people see submission submission is a place of protection it's a place of cover it's a place where the woman find comfort if she knows and understand what true submission is submission you don't have to rule over your husband headship unless you married the wrong head you know because if you married the right head then his head is going to be connected to god and he's going to deal with you based on that and i do understand all of that kind of stuff you understand um because i've been through um some of the things that um you just asked um trying to look at this next question um that's why you see some women covering their heads with cloth which is religious that's very religious um 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 a man of god um timothy nathan um because the, that's a material thing and it's a spiritual thing that we're talking about here okay so um i was in a church like that um for a long long time where you know the woman had to cover this part of her head which is um the entry point by the way you guys um um the cap is here all right and not just for the woman but for the man all right so but 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 they 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 cover 
the head as a sign of being covered but you're not covered just because you got material on you know and the muslims are like that and indians are sometimes like that but it is a spiritual cover it is a, a man that has the capacity to cover you to seal you off to to shield you you know and when you don't marry someone that is able to cover you oof, it's horrible okay so um you know it yeah it is because you you know uh, and, and 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 they got to play catch up they have to play catch up. They have to play grow up. They have to play mature. They have to catch up with you. You know what I'm saying? Because there was no equal yoke there. And and that's okay. God can make it all right. He can develop it and make it all right. I mean, if that's your real mate, you know, if that's your real mate, because you could be married to somebody else's mate. And, you know, I, a lot of people don't believe this, but I believe that we are spe specifically married made or designed for one person. I do. And when we wait on God and when we become whole in God, then we are able to um, we are able to be found by the mate that God designed us for, you know, because we have to wait for the mate to also know who they are. Because once that person manifests and wake up and find out who they are, they might look at that person and say, well, dang, you don't, you know, because they didn't they, they didn't know them before they married. And when you don't know you before you marry, you can't treat or love somebody like you because you are not manifested. You don't know you yet. And this is why we must become whole before we get married. We must become healed before we get married or we will be needy. We will um, expect out of marriages something that someone else cannot give. Only God can give. And, and, and when you become whole and when you become um, solid and just you and enjoy you and love you and don't need anything outside of God to do that for you, then you become the perfect candidate for marriage, whether you be male or female. But if you're just marrying so you can have sex, you're just marrying because you don't want to be alone. These are disasters. These, 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 these are disasters waiting to happen, waiting to happen, you know. So, yes, um, the covering is um, anybody got any more questions while we're up here about the um, because this is my last time coming up about um, spirit husbands, spirit wives. I just wanted to um, put that in, though, that a lot of these churches that are not um, developed on the, the kingdom message of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, um, they are open doorways for demonic forces. And many times, a lot of these people or leaders, they can, they go to the foundation of their, their members or whatever, because they're trying to pull and abstract what they need to build their agenda, to build their kingdom. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and because our foundation has not been dealt with, if we have not been healed, we have not, you know, you understand what I'm saying? We, if, if 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 you have anything broken in you and you go into one of them churches, you're gonna be jacked up. You're gonna you're gonna get messed up because they're coming into the foundation. And and then the next thing you know, you're gonna find yourself fighting for 15, 10, 20 years trying to get free from an attachment that you never was supposed to be attached to in the first place. And you thought it was a family, you thought it was, but you never became who you were supposed to be. You don't even know who you are. You don't even know what you were designed to do. But you've been in that church for five, 10, 15 years. Took Jesus three years to cultivate his apostles and get them running where they up, where they turned the world upside down. Um, I'm trying to see the next question. Okay. Um, a license to fornicate. I, I didn't understand that, baby. A license to fornicate. Oh, yeah, because look, but when you but when you really sell out to God, you become sanctified. That means you're set apart. You're set apart for who he has designed you to be with. And guess what? Girl, you and you, when we when you love God for real, ain't no way in the world you're gonna go out there and do wrong. You don't want to hurt him. That's how I was. You don't want to hurt the lover of your soul now. See, that, that relationship becomes so solid that um your commitment ain't got nothing to do with people no more. It's between you and him. God bless you too, brother. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your input. Anybody else got any input on the spirit husbands, the spirit wives? Um, I got a lot of inboxes um, on the partic on, on that particular topic. And some people had uh, more information um, than I had. And so if you have any insight and you would like to um, add, just put it up here so other people can um, get the information and 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 use it. I'm gonna pray real quick for those that have been struggling with this particular spirit, um, spirit husband, spirit wives, the incubus, succubus spirit. But I am gonna say that you must repent if you're not saved, if you haven't truly given your life over to the Lord. I didn't say go to church. I said giving your life over to the Lord, and you live saved before Him because you love Him. You might not know Him enough to love Him, but I promise you, if you keep moving in, you're going to love Him. 
look, you got to do that before you can get free. Because you're just, you're just playing games with yourself if you don't get saved. Because you're a doorway. Okay, so you have to get saved before you can use those prayers. There's, I have a, a host of prayers on my page. Go there and they will help you to get delivered. Father God, I thank you for each and every one of them that have joined me on today. And I ask you, Lord God, to cover them, to protect them, to, to shield them, and to expose to them every renegade spirit that is coming in and out of their space. God, give them what they need in order for them <laughs> to do and to be what you have designated for them to do and be. God, in the name of Jesus, we bind up the force of every Nephilim, every spirit and spirit husband, spirit wife that is coming in and out of their spirit illegally in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Yeshua, the Holy One of Israel. God, arrest those spirits and show them who they are. Oh God, we understand that those that come in, Lord God, the night hour, they are someone that is familiar with us and we ask you to expose every familiar spirit that is coming into our space illegally. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, cover their families, cover them. Let there be no repercussion because they decide to go the right way. Let there be no repercussion because they decide to do the right thing. God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for blessing them with the overflow. Because they say yes to your will and yes to your way. Yes to your will and yes to your way in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Divine protection, divine protection in the name of Je divine protection in the name of Jesus. We pray so be it and amen. God bless you guys. Love you with an everlasting love. I got a little freedom going on here, so I stayed up here a little bit longer. Have a blessed and wonderful Tuesday. Bye-bye. Look, don't be betrothed to a beast. Find out what's going on at the foundation of your soul. Because an ancestor could have betrothed you. You could be tied to somebody in the spirit realm. A leader. Somebody. Somebody that you don't even know. That have already married you. You already engaged to be married and don't even have a clue. But thank you, Jesus, that everything that has been done in the dark will be brought to the light. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bless you, Anita.